Leave it to Beaver, a classic TV series from 1957, takes us back to a simpler time following the misadventures of a young boy named Beaver and his family. The show doesn't just entertain, it's a slice of Americana that resonates with many. As you delve into the series, you'll encounter a mix of funny, shocking, and even sad moments that keep you hooked. Now, think about it out of all the roles in this series, which one was your favorite? Stick around, because there are many fascinating facts ahead. Before we continue, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this iconic series? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. Get ready for a trip down memory lane as we explore the world of Leave it to Beaver. Keep watching for the funny, shocking, and even heartwarming moments that make this show a timeless classic. And don't forget to share your thoughts and memories with us. Leave it to Beaver is a classic TV series from 1957 that, despite not being a part of my regular watch list, piqued my interest following the passing of Ken Osmond in 2020, also known as Eddie Haskell. Upon discovering all six seasons on Peacock, it was observed that the show is commendably crafted and executed for its time. The writing is strong, the performances are notable, and the production values are of a high standard. The inclusion of recurring characters contributes to a sense of continuity rarely found in many comedy shows. Set in an era that sidesteps several controversial issues of the 1960s, such as women's increased participation in the workforce, civil rights, and other societal changes, the series predominantly focuses on the everyday challenges and joys of childhood. The portrayal of Beaver and Wally's tight bond, as well as their shared room, aligns with the norms of that era. Parenting is depicted realistically, with the parents acknowledging their imperfections and treating mistakes with fairness a refreshing perspective. The show maintains a light-hearted tone throughout, with comedic elements interspersed. Ken Osmond's portrayal of Eddie Haskell is particularly praised for its comedic brilliance. Despite the positive aspects, the absence of 1960s themes is noted, warranting a rating of 8. This absence is seen as a missed opportunity to explore and reflect the evolving social landscape of that time. Expressing gratitude, another viewer reminisces about the impact of the series during their formative years in the early 1970s. Fond childhood memories are associated with the daily reruns on a local TV channel, creating a sense of nostalgia. Beaver and Wally's camaraderie is likened to that of best friends, resonating with viewers as they navigate the ups and downs of childhood. The show is credited for imparting valuable lessons to both children and families. In conclusion, the timeless nature of the show lies in its relatable depiction of family dynamics, childhood adventures, and life lessons. Despite its nostalgic charm, it could have explored a broader spectrum of societal issues. The enduring appeal of the series is in its ability to resonate with audiences through its relatable content. Barbara Billingsley, who played the mother in the TV series, shared in an interview that as her TV sons matured, there were fewer scenes featuring hugs. She mentioned in Entertainment Weekly that the boys became aware of her physical changes, leading to a shift in the dynamics of their on-screen interactions. The Cleaver family's first residence in Mayfield had the address 485 Mapleton Drive, a subtle nod to CBS's New York headquarters at 485 Madison Avenue during the first season. Later, they moved to 211 Pine Street for their second home. The show drew inspiration from the writer's own families. Joe Connolly, one of the creators, based the characters Beaver and Wally on his own sons. To capture authentic dialogues, Connolly took the boys out and recorded their conversations in his notebook. Aidy and Larry's characters were crafted based on the experiences of their friends' children. These behind-the-scenes insights provide a glimpse into the real-life influences that shaped the on-screen family dynamics of the series. Jerry Mathers made quite an impression at his audition for the TV series. Wearing his Cub Scout uniform, he expressed his eagerness to leave for a den meeting. The casting directors were charmed by his innocent candor, leading to his casting in the title role. Barbara Billingsley, who portrayed the mother in the series, shared in a 27 interview that her consistent choice of wearing pearls on camera was due to a small indentation above her sternum that didn't photograph well. The character Ward Cleaver, played by Hugh Beaumont, earned recognition as the 28th greatest TV dad of all time, according to TV Guide's list. 
These behind-the-scenes insights from Jerry Mather's memorable audition to Barbara Billingsley's wardrobe choice and the recognition of Ward Cleaver as a great TV dad offer a glimpse into the unique elements that shaped the series. Each detail adds to the authenticity of the on-screen family dynamics, reflecting the simplicity and charm of the show's era. Eddie Haskell secured the second spot on TV Guide's TV's 10 Biggest Brats. In all 234 episodes, Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dow, and Jerry Mathers consistently appeared, becoming the backbone of the series. The characters Wally, Eddie, and Lumpy each cruised in distinctive cars, a 1953 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible, a 1947 Dodge, and a 1944 Ford convertible, respectively. These straightforward details showcase the enduring presence of key characters and the unique rides that became synonymous with them in the series. Each aspect contributes to the simplicity and authenticity of the show's narrative, providing viewers with a glimpse into the dynamics of the on-screen world crafted by the creators. Richard Deacon, known for his portrayal of the pompous Fred Rutherford, saw reduced appearances in the last season. Simultaneously, he took on the role of Mel Cooley in The Dick Van Dyke Show. This dual commitment led to a diminishing presence of Fred Rutherford in the final season. A prevalent but misguided rumor suggests that rock legend Alice Cooper portrayed Eddie Haskell in his youth. This misconception arose from an interview where Cooper mentioned being like Eddie Haskell as a kid, not portraying the character on the show. The rumor, often circulated, misinterprets Cooper's statement about his behavior and attitude during his younger years. In the new Leave it to Beaver series, a canceled check prop reveals Wally's address in Mayfield OH. This subtle detail adds a layer to the series, offering a glimpse into the characters' lives beyond the original show. These behind-the-scenes facts provide additional layers to the narrative of the iconic series, shedding light on the challenges faced by cast members and dispelling misconceptions about notable figures like Alice Cooper. Each detail contributes to the authenticity of the show's portrayal of family dynamics, offering a unique perspective on the world crafted by the creators. The TV series Leave it to Beaver started with the pilot Studio 57, it's a Small World, which first aired on April 23, 1957. Interestingly, this pilot lacked a laugh track and opening or closing themes. Ward and Wally were initially portrayed by Max Showalter and Paul Sullivan, respectively. However, Sullivan was replaced due to a sudden growth spurt after the series was picked up. Not until the finale did viewers learn how Beaver got his nickname. Wally, struggling to pronounce Theodore as a small child, ended up saying something between Tweeter and Beaver. Eventually, the name Beaver caught on within the family. Remarkably, the show debuted on the same day the Soviets launched Sputnik. This historical coincidence adds an intriguing layer to the series' timeline. These lesser-known facts about the show's beginnings and the origin of Beaver's nickname offer a glimpse into the early stages of Leave it to Beaver, providing context to its development and introducing amusing details about the characters. Hugh Beaumont, known for his role as Ward Cleaver in the TV series, made significant contributions beyond acting. Besides portraying the patriarch, he took on roles in writing and directing. Beaumont wrote one episode independently and contributed to several others. Moreover, he directed 23 episodes, showcasing his multifaceted involvement in the production. In the pilot episode, a young Harry Shearer played the part of Frankie, adding an interesting layer to the series' early moments. Notably, Shearer's appearance in the pilot foreshadow with his later accomplishments in the entertainment industry. Adding to Hugh Beaumont's on-screen persona, it's noteworthy that he held a Master of Theology degree from the University of Southern California and was an ordained minister. This lesser-known facet of Beaumont's background adds depth to his portrayal of Ward Cleaver, reflecting his versatile skills beyond the world of acting. These behind-the-scenes insights from Beaumont's diverse contributions to Shearer's early appearance and the actor's theological background offer a glimpse into the intricate elements that shaped Leave it to Beaver, providing a unique perspective on the world crafted by the creators.